So since we have learned how to add modules in the router, now we will learn some basic commands and some basic services like DSCP. So for that, I will take a generic router and a generic switch, then two hosts and I will connect them with the help of cable. So first of all we will skip this process then I will type enable then config terminal then if we want to set the password on the router then I will type enable password and then the password for example Cisco and we will hit enter this will set a password on the access mode so if I type exit and then exit and I hit enter and I type enable then it will ask me a password so the problem with this password is that if I type so and command it will show us the password in plain text form so what we need to do we need to encrypt this password so first we will go to config mode then again then I will type enable secret and then the password that is Cisco let's say 1 2 3 and hit enter so now what will happen when I type exit and enable it will ask me the password so if I type Cisco that was our previous password it will not accept it the secret password overrides the normal password so in that case I have to type Cisco 1 2 3 and hit enter now and when I type show run command the password is in encrypted form as and uh, as you can as you can see the enable password is still there and it's in plain text form so again I will type config terminal if you want to set the console password so in real life the routers are accessed with the help of the console port that is available on each router and switch so what a user do user takes a console cable puts its one end into its router and another, another end on the laptop and he opens up software for accessing the console port and he access the console of the router type line console 0 and then here we can configure these much of commands so here we will type password then I will type password Cisco or any other password we like and hit enter then login and hit enter it will ask for the password so again if you want to prevent the user from taking the telnet we will type a telnet password so for that line vty and then so first we will exit then line vty and then first line number 0 to 4 that means at, at a single time 5 users can take the console of your router then hit enter here then again password and we will type the password cisco or any other password hit enter and again the login so now when we try to access the telnet it will ask us the password and before that some basic commands like if you want to uh, change the host name I will simple type exit and then the host name whatever name we want for example R1 so now the router's name will be changed to the R1 again we can use the ping command to test the connectivity from one end to another end so the ping command uh, works in privilege mode or if you want to run the ping command in configuration mode I have to type the do and then ping and then the destination IP 
similarly we can trace the root from source to destination with the help of trace root command and if you want to run it on config mode then I have to type do trace root so if we are not doing any configuration and the router is idle for a few minutes then it will exit or log out itself so in this case we will come to this mode so if you want to prevent that we will type then so if you want to prevent that we have to go to the line console 0 and then we have to type, uh, type exact timeout and then here the timeouts in minutes so if I say 0 and hit enter then it will immediately timeout as soon as it gets inactive so here let's say 10 minutes then after 10 minutes it will log out itself and it will go to the access, user access mode if we are typing a command and a log message has come so the command will continue along with the message log message so if you want to prevent that we will use a command logging synchronous in the console mode so we will go to the line console 0 and we will type logging and synchronous after this command the uh, if you if a log message comes up then the command will be shifted to the next line it will be a lot much more a lot more easier for us to see the command similarly if i type any wrong command it will translate it into the domain server so if you want to prevent that i will type no ip domain lookup and hit enter so what will happen now if i type any wrong command it will just give us the error unknown command or computer name and but before if i type ip domain lookup and hit enter and again if i type any wrong command it will translate it that message to the domain server so we can manually break it by pressing control shift and 6 so now we will configure the DSCP server on the router so for that we will click on the router so first we need to give an IP address to the fastener 0 slash 0 port of the router so interface fastener 0 slash 0 then IP address 10.0.0.1 and GT subnet mask 255.255.255.0 then no shut again now we have to assign IP DHCP and then pool and then we have to define a name so let's say ABC and hit enter now in I now we are in DHCP configuration mode here we have to assign the network so in the network we have to give 10.0.0.0 and then hit subnet mask information 255.255.255.0 and hit enter again we have to give the default router then default router will be the IP address of the fast internet 0 slash 0 port of the router that means from where the DSCP IPs will be provided so that is the 10.0.0.1 and hit enter again if we have any DNS server in our network then I have to enter the DNS server and then the IP 4.4.4.4 for example we can take any IP if we have any DNS server and hit enter so these are the options that we need to configure then type exit so now what will happen if I go to IP configuration mode then I type DSCP I will get an IP address from TENS network that is 10.0.0.2 because 10.0.0.1 is already assigned and that will be the default gateway so any any packet will be forwarded to the default gateway that is fastener 0 slash 0 port of router 
again we have the DNS server that is 4.4.4.4 and we have configured it manually again we will go to the PC18 and in DSCP mode we will get the IP address so if due to some reason DSCP stops working then APIPA works so for example if fastnet if we shut down the fastnet port let's say interface config t uh, sorry enable config t then interface fastnet 2 slash 1 and then shut so now if i go to pc 17 and i send the dscp request then the DSCP request will fail and a private IP range from the APIPA will be used so if DSCP fails then APIPA gives an IP address to the host so again we will type no shut and fast forward time then we will successfully get an IP address and if you want to exclude some IP addresses for future use then I will type IP DSCP and excluded address then low IP then that is 10.0.0.2 and then high IP that is 10.0.0.10 this means from 10.0.0.2 up to 10.0.0.10 and hit enter so now what will happen when I click on IP configuration static and again the SCP then the IP ranges from 10.0.0.2 up to dot 10 will be excluded and I will get the IP address 10.0.0.11 so that is how the DSCP configuration is performed and there is one more protocol that is uh, CDP that is Cisco discovery protocol so CDP gives the information of directly connected networks or the neighbors so for example if I go to the interface fastnet 1 slash 0 and I type IP address 14.0.0.1 255 0 and then no shut and then I exit again exit and I type so cdp and then neighbors and hit enter so as you can see there is a switch connected with the fastnet 0 slash 0 port of the router and the port id of the switch is fastnet 2 slash 1 so the fastnet 0 slash 0 port of router is connected to the fastnet 2 slash 1 port of the switch and as you can see the capability is S so S means S means switch device that is connected on the other end can perform switching so we know that it is a switch similarly uh, fastnet there is a switch connected with the fastnet 1 slash 0 port of router see local interface means the local interface of device and the port ID means the uh, the interface of the device that is on the other end so fastnet 1 slash 0 port of router 0 is connected with the fastnet 0 slash 1 port of switch so with the help of CDP we can draw the diagram of our complete network in industries CDP is, by, uh, CDP is normally disabled so that uh, not anyone can use CDP and know the network information that is how CDP works so in this video we covered the concept of DSCP CDP and some basic commands thank you for watching